Off in the distance of the castle ruins, I could hear a metallic tromping, and it was drawing nearer. In the evening light, what I saw made no sense. There was a short, lean form wearing stout boots that made much heavier footfalls than they ought to. It carried a wickedly curved blade that seemed comically oversized for its stature, though I certainly wasn't laughing. The creature seemed unburdened by its own gainliness, and most unnerving of all, it was rapidly bearing down on me, his ragged beard trailing in his wake. In the sparse light, I could see the maniac glint in his crimson, beady eyes, and most telling of all was the cap on his head. Its scarlet hue told me I was in the presence of those bloody butchers of the Feywirl. A red cap. Greetings and welcome to the Dream Syndicate. In today's video, we're going to be making an evil fey creature, a red cap art doll. So let's get crafting. Here are the sketches I used to design this little murder sprite. I wanted him to have rustic, dingy clothes that look kind of thrown together. I also worked out some compositions for images that I was planning to make with him. We'll start off with a length of aluminum tubing that will wad up a ball of tinfoil around that's a little smaller than the size of the head we want. Then we'll work thin pieces of clay around it to form the head and neck. I'll put links to where you can find the supplies I'm using in the description and pinned comment. Next, we'll use our pointy clay tool to mark in about where the eyes are going to go and start to press in the eye sockets first with my thumbs and then with a small ball stylus. I want his chin to jaw down a bit, so I'll add a ball of clay and blend it in with a flat clay tool. We'll make him open wide and say ah as we shape a mouth with our tool. Now it's eye time. This is when head sculpts really start to come to life to me. We use pre-baked balls of original Sculpey that are close to the same size. Then attach a large, pointy wedge shape for his nose and blend that in. We'll form these sort of hooded lower and upper eyelids. Usually, the thicker and wrinklier you make a character's eyelids, the older they end up looking. And we'll add a strip of clay to give him a heavy brow. Redcaps are creatures from English and Scottish mythology and are usually depicted as a short, old man with long, prominent teeth, skinny fingers armed with talons like eagles, large eyes of a fiery red color, grisly hair streaming down his shoulders, iron boots, a pike staff in his hand, and a red cap on his head. If you want to join me in making imaginary reality, subscribe and hit the bell icon. We'll give him a little wrinkly texture. Here we'll give him some nostrils on either side of his big, pointy nose. Now we'll put in a bunch of sharp, little teeth that are already baked. Redcaps are said to kill travelers who stray into their homes, often near castle ruins, and dye their hats with their victim's blood, from which they get their name. To Redcaps, murder is a matter of survival, for if the blood staying their hat dries out, they perish. These wicked fey creatures have appeared in various fantasy stories, role-playing games, and video games. Next, we're going to carefully put a piece in for his tongue and refine it. It probably would have been better to do this before I put the teeth in. If you use techniques you learned from any of my videos, I'd be happy to take a look. You can tag me wherever you're posting to. You can find my links in the description and pinned comment below. We'll take a moment to look for areas that we might want to work on. And I think he needs more mass on his cheeks. Using our small ball styles, we'll give him some forehead wrinkles. Scoring the area with my clay tool to help attach them, we'll add on some pointy ears.
We'll sculpt in those tiny swirls inside the ear. We'll give him a pronounced Adam's apple. Then we'll poke some holes where we're going to attach wires for a beard and hair. Now we'll lay on this blue undertone. I like to pick a color that's complementary to the flesh tone I'm using, and since we'll be painting them a sort of mint color, this blue will work great. For the hands, we're mixing the paint with water diluted Mod Podge. You can watch my process for making poseable art doll hands. I'll leave a link in the description and pinned comment. Our palette consists of a green, a couple of blues, a couple of reds, a few earth tones, black and white. Generally speaking, it's rare that you would need a palette of more than a dozen colors or so. We'll lay in a lot of peach, pink, and yellow tones at this early stage of painting. The finished art I made with the Red Cap Art Doll is available as prints, and I'll put a link to where you can get them in the description and pinned comment. Here we're starting to rein in some of the craziness of our underpainting. And I think it's looking pretty good. We just need to push it a little further. We can call this head painting done. We'll just quickly paint his hands. Paint's still being mixed with Mod Podge and a little less water at this point. Next, we'll twist up some thin 20 gauge wire for the red caps hair and beard and embed it into the clay with plumber's epoxy. Then we'll play around with this fabric on the wire until we get a shape that we like and then sew and fabric tack it on.
We'll give the teeth and the mouth a wet look by adding a couple of coats of gloss varnish. And we'll give him a hairstyle by attaching these bits of fabric to the back of his head. Now we'll apply a thin coat of Fabri-Tac and carefully attach little pieces of feathers for his eyebrows. We'll attach a mustache to his beard using the same process we did for his other hair. Next, we'll sculpt some sturdy iron boots from epoxy sculpt. I want his pants to look like they're tucked into the red cap's boots, so I'm creating a cavity inside of them. Redcaps are renowned for wearing iron boots, and the sound of their heavy footfalls often gives them away. Despite such ungainly footwear, they move with incredible speed and are nearly impossible to outrun. We're going to give these boots metal studs going around them, so we'll create a little hole with this pointy tool. To make sure we have enough space to embed the studs, we're going to use a hand drill to deepen the holes. And paint on a couple of layers of silver acrylic paint. The metal studs are going to be made from the heads of sewing pins, and since they're so small, we're going to embed them in a bit of shipping tape so pieces we cut with our wire cutters don't go shooting everywhere, so we'll end up stepping on them months later. Then we'll just put some resin epoxy in the holes and glue the pieces in. Obviously the boots look way too pristine for such a nasty little creature like a red cap, so we'll do an ink wash to make them look nice and cruddy. We don't want our red cap to look indecent, so we'll give them some clothes. First we'll give them some pants, and what we're doing is sewing a sort of kite shape onto either side of each pant leg that will overlap and give it the part that would cover the red cap's crotch. That's a phrase I didn't imagine myself uttering today. Next we'll give him a shirt. I wanted it to be really roughly made, like it's a long, ratty shirt that's just crudely put together. We'll trim the length of his arm wires and attach his hands so we can start sewing on his sleeves. Now we're going to make these spikes sort of bracers from an old scrap of leather I have. 
This came from a broken dog leash, and if I had it my way, I'd have a small tote full of interesting weathered earth tone scraps like this. We're just going to create holes and fabric tack these tiny nails into place for the red cap spikes. Here's a tip you might find helpful. I found that I could push in nails with the head of another nail, so you can mostly keep your fingers away from adhesives. Then we're going to wrap this dark red hemp around his wrists as more of ornamentation than anything else. We're also going to use it to create straps to tie the Bracer Sea Art Doll's forearms and wrists. There's a knot on the one side, and we'll just pull the thread through the back so we can tie it on later. We'll use regular sewing thread to attach the hand part of the bracer. You might notice I did away with one of the spikes. It seemed like three were too many for the size of this, and they were sitting kind of crooked. And that's what he looks like with both bracers on. Next we're going to take this cool beat up old piece of leather and make a shoulder pad. Of course we have to keep the spike thing going and put one on the shoulder. We'll sew the two pieces together with our red thread. These pieces were really tough to sew through. Then I sewed a scrap of that orange leather to a thin length of suede cord. We'll sew a few stitches to have this function like a strap for the shoulder armor. Once it's measured and cut the size, the strap will get sewn to the back. We're going to make a belt buckle out of a little piece of gold wire by creating an overlap and sort of counterbending the ends. You can use all sorts of things to serve as a belt buckle. I've used jewelry pieces, buttons, and tabs from cans. and attach this bit of cord here to form a belt. I'm cheating this a little by not making this function exactly like a belt and sewing it on instead. I was planning on doing a whole separate video for the scythe build, but I somehow lost a whole bunch of footage. The scythe handles epoxy sculpt over armature wire that I then painted, and the blade's heavy stock paper glued into a groove in the epoxy sculpt. And then all that was painted with silver acrylic. 
We'll take some resin epoxy mixed with a little alizarin and crimson, cadmium red, and raw umber acrylics to get the look of wet blood smeared on the scythe. With my first attempt to make a mushroom hat for this guy, it was ridiculously oversized. I wanted it to be large, but this just wasn't working. We'll use tinfoil covered with paper tape that we'll then paper mache on with Mod Podge as well as use it to create texture. Then we'll paint it with acrylics and do a couple layers of ink washes to make it look more earthy and subdued to the colors. And of course we'll wipe away our ink washes after a minute or so. We'll just put on little dabs of ink to give the mushroom hat a more natural look. For no reason at all, here's the hat modeled by a skull. Since the lore about redcaps tells us that they keep their hats soaked in blood or they die, we'll do the same trick we did with the scythe to make some wet resin blood on the mushroom hat. Here's our little red cap, all ready to cause carnage and mayhem. Watch the top video if you want to see me make another evil minion type creature, or click the second video if you want to watch me make wizard art dolls. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to join me in making the imaginary reality, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Until next time, make believe.